Uh, our scientists that worked on this, and we did talk about this in biology, so I'm not going to go too long into this, but we had Rosalind Wilkins who took x-ray photos. Uh, she, or Rosalind, I'm sorry, Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin took x-ray photos of the molecule. And then their x-ray information was um, used by James Watson and Francis Crick to come up with a structure of what DNA could possibly be. There was also one other scientist, his name was Erwin Shargoff, who figured out some of the chemical components of DNA. So all of these people working together, Wilson, Wilson, Wilkins, Franklin, Watson, Crick, and Shargaff, ended up kind of coming up together with what the structure of DNA must look like. And here are some of the things they found. First of all, and you'll remember some of this, they re, uh, recall that they learned that there are four different bases in DNA. There's A, which stands for adenine. Adenine. There's T, which stands for thymine. And adenine and thymine always bond together. Um, the other thing they found was there's a second base called, they called it with the letter G, but it's called guanine. And the fourth base called cytosine. That also bond together. Okay. Now these bases, they're called nitrogenous bases. Okay, so A, T, G, and C are nitrogenous bases. They fall into two categories. They can either be what are called purines or pyrimidines. The T and the C are the pyrimidines. And the A and the G are the purines. And the way I remember that is that pyrimidine kind of reminds me of pyramid and King Tut with the T and Cleopatra remind me of pyramids because they were Egyptian. So that's how I remember T and C are the pyrimidines and then left over our A and G are purines. In our diagram here, the purines are the bigger bases right here. Okay, so they are take up a little bit more space in the DNA molecule. So we'll just say that this one is our C, and this is our T, this is a T, and this is a C. Therefore, C has to bond across from a G, T has to bond across from an A, T and A, C and G. All right, so there's the rungs of our DNA ladder, the bases that bond together. They are bonded together, but you can see these little kind of dashed lines between them. Okay, those are hydrogen bonds. If you remember from our work in biochemistry, hydrogen bonds are the weakest of all the bonds. They break very easily, which will become important later on. At the sides, right here in blue, start the uh, sides of our ladder. These are sugars. Okay, remember we talked about sugars back in biochemistry and the one we are most familiar with glucose which was a six carbon sugar. Okay, this is a five carbon sugar. In the case of DNA it's called deoxyribose. And then our last section on the sides of our DNA molecule are these right here, which represent phosphate groups, PO4, or phosphates. Okay, so again, the rungs of the ladder are these nitrogenous bases. The sides of the ladder are always alternating phosphate and sugar groups. 
The last thing I want to point out with the sides then is that if a one side starts with a phosphate, we call that end the five prime end. The opposite of the five prime end is always ending with a sugar, which we call the three prime end. We go to the other side of the ladder. We've got a phosphate on this side. That's a five prime and a sugar on this side, which is a five prime. So if we follow these from 3 prime to 5 prime, you'll see they're running in opposite directions. For that reason, we say the two sides of the DNA molecule are anti-parallel. They are parallel to each other, but they run in opposite directions, so we call that anti-parallel. Okay, let's look at some of these other diagrams then of the DNA molecule. This one on the left, just to point out that DNA isn't a flat molecule. Obviously, it three, has three dimensions. And the shape that we have for this molecule is called a double helix. Oops. The reason to call it a double helix is because it has two sides to the ladder. The helix part comes from the twisting pattern that it creates. And then on this side, I just wanted to point out to you that even though we you know, show it, as often a, a ladder and you can see the steps in it or whatever. In reality, all of the spaces in this DNA molecule are filled with electrons from all of these atoms. So if we were able to see the DNA molecule, it might look something more like this. But of course, we can't see the individual atoms of a DNA molecule under a microscope because we don't have a powerful enough microscope to do that. All right, so now the scientists knew had a pretty good idea of what the DNA molecule looked like. The next thing they set out to do was figure out, well, how does it make copies of itself? And the reason DNA has to make copies of itself is so that it can put new DNA into all of our cells. So whenever you grow and create new cells through mitosis, or whenever um, you produce reproductive cells through meiosis, if you get an injury and you need to create more bone or skin cells, make new blood cells, all of those processes require more DNA. So scientists knew that there had to be a way for DNA to make copies of itself. And that process, as they learned, uh, called DNA replication, uh, was dependent upon the structure of DNA. So once they knew what the structure of DNA was, it made a lot more uh, easy to understand how it made a copy of itself. So we're gonna go through that. This is a DNA molecule on its side, and I'm just gonna show the bases for the purposes of replication. So I'm gonna do a few bases over here. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Get my pen back. Okay. So A, T, C, G, G. Again, I'm just going to randomly put in some bases. So if one side of the DNA strand has those letters, the opposite has to have the complementary pairs. A with T, C with G. I'm just going to go through and put those. I would suggest writing this in your notebook as a diagram, because a lot of the um, explanation that I'm going to do from here on out is going to be diagramming. So here's our original DNA molecule. You can see the 3 prime and 5 prime ends are labeled. Again, the 5 prime is the phosphate end, 3 prime is the sugar end. Out here floating around in the nucleus, of course the DNA is in the nucleus, so these are also in the nucleus, are these random bases. That reminds me of something I failed to mention in the last slide that I'll get to here in a second. So when I say bases, really what's included in each of these little bases down here is also a sugar and a phosphate. And that has a specific name that we need to know. It's called a nucleotide. Okay, The nucleotide are the building blocks of DNA. Um, just like proteins building blocks or amino acids and um, sugars building blocks are often glucose molecules, nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. They have in them a base, a sugar, number three, a phosphate. 
Okay, so each nucleotide is a sugar, a base, and a phosphate. So even if I just write like I did in this one, just A for adenine, you know, recognize that that also has a sugar and a phosphate with it. Okay, that's what we're building when we do that.